Nervous Gaming. My name is Phoenix, and we are back with another Star Trek Online video. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Ranger Temporal Battle Cruiser. So, <clears throat> without further ado, let us get into the stats of this ship. Okay, so starting off here, we have a Lieutenant Tactical, a Lieutenant Commander Tactical, a Commander Engineering, a Lieutenant Commander Science, and a Lieutenant or an Ensign Universal. Uh, so what else do we have? We have consoles, we have four engineering, three tactical, and two science. For weapons, we have four in the front, four in the back, a base hull of 36,000, a shield modifier of 1.05, base turn rate of 10, uh, inertia rating of 55, impulse modifier of 0.15, and three device slots. Um, you also get plus 10 to uh, engine and weapon power. Uh, this can equip dual cannons, which is interesting. Uh, you also get the cruiser command commu communications array, but you only get two. You only get shield frequency modulation and weapon system efficiency. But you do get a universal console, and you also get this molecular reconstruction. So I'm not entirely too sure about what that is, but. Uh, it's got a little blurb here. There's three. There's defensive configuration. While this configuration is active, the starship's hull will dynamically reconfigure it to fill more of a defensive role. Uh, this provides a boost to maximum shield power and incoming hull healing. This comes at a cost of a small reduction to flight speed and turn rate. Defensive con configuration regenerates one defensive counter uh, every 10 seconds. Then you have offensive uh, configuration. While this configuration is active, the Starship systems will dynamically reconfigure to fill more of an offensive role. This provides a boost to maximum engine power, speed, and turn. This comes at a cost of a small reduction of incoming hull healing. Offensive con uh, configuration regenerates one offensive counter every 10 seconds. And then you have a support configuration. And uh, this provides a boost to maximum auxiliary power, control strength, and exotic damage. This comes at a cost of a small reduction to energy weapon damage. Uh, support configuration generates one support counter every 10 seconds. And then you have this molecular de deconstruction beam. Activating this ability uh, requires a total of six counters generated by defensive co uh, configuration, offensive co configuration, or supportive configuration. Molecular deconstruction beam deals physical damage over time and disables the target. In addition to healing your hull over time, the ship's power uh, scales on the number of defend, uh, offensive counters consumed. Its hull heal scales with the number of defensive counters consumed. Lastly, it disables duration scales with the number of support uh, counters consumed. Activating this ability will consume all offensive defensive support counter generated from the configurations. So. I'm going to be honest, that is a whole mess of I have no clue. <laughs> I can only speculate <clears throat> because I haven't actually flown this ship yet. So this is going to be the first time I'm flying this this vessel. Um, so uh, when you fire the beam, uh, it's going to disable the target and you're going to get healing over time, I guess, I, I would assume. So I don't know. It's It's... It's an interesting mechanic to look at it um, and just to read about it. To actually see it is going to be one thing. So hopefully when we do an STF, we can bring the ship in and we can um, uh, see what happens when we get enough uh, tickets or whatever it is. So And we'll see what the deconstruction beam actually does. So... Uh, it doesn't look like it is any sort of uh, form of uh, like pho uh, phaser, anti-proton, or anything like that. It's just a, it's just a beam, and it fires, and it uh, disables your target. So, anyways, uh, next is we're gonna just uh, quickly go over the design of the ship. Alrighty, so here is the Ranger. So, uh, as you can see here, we got a nice round saucer section here. We have a raised saucer over here and then another raised saucer this is probably the bridge right here and then you have this piece right here which is raised as well um, I don't know if, if there's torpedoes 
back there. It doesn't look like it. it looks like just like a kind of like a, a fin back there. Um, so underneath here you have the uh, the hull here with the uh, deflector dish. So you have the nice golden um, def uh, actual satellite dish on the back here. You have your little swoop here, and then at the back here you have your uh, uh, shuttle bay, and then you have. Um, these two tubes here which are your impulse engines and then uh, attached is this piece here which kind of looks like uh, the piece off of the Akira class type vessels <clears throat> and so this kind of reminds me of a mix of Enterprise uh, sorry the NX Enterprise and the Akira class um, and then you have these two things here. I don't know if those are extra impulse engines or not. They don't look like it. I don't know exactly what those are. But then you have them attached to the actual warp nacelles here. So you have the uh, the spinny thingies here. Uh, I don't know if those are actually ram scoops or Bassar collectors. I don't know exactly what these are um, when it comes to the 23rd century. Um, but you have the tubes here, and then you have these little things here, and then you have the, I guess what would be considered the exhaust here. Um, you have the round ball. I don't know. I don't know if it is an exhaust because you don't really see any exhaust come out of the ships. As for um, changes, there's nothing really. You have you have the Pioneer Bridge, which is kind of similar to the. Uh, Constitution bridge which gives a different picture but so you have that but you can go with any bridge that you want if, if you wish uh, windows there's only one type of windows sadly and for material you only get this type unless you buy the paladin if you have the paladin then you can probably go with whatever they have a, uh, a new type 8 which is funky looking so I'm interested in seeing that um, so you have the upgrade, that. But yeah, you only get type zero. So and then colors, you can pick whatever colors you want. Oops, go with the black there. <laughs> and then hull style. So you can go with the paladin or the ranger. It doesn't matter. But unless unless you don't have this, like I don't, so you can't buy it. So and then you get patterns. So you get you get your block one here, which is probably the only new one you got. So, yeah, we'll go with block. So, make it a little darker there. That's about it. Kind of sad, really, to be honest. Like, no, no options to change much. Um, but I guess that's the limit, the the limitation of the 23rd century vessels. So, but anyways, so without further ado, let's go up in space. Let's take a, a much closer look at this vessel, and uh, and then we'll go into an STF. All right. So here's just a quick closer look at the vessel here so I forgot to mention that you got the, this little glowy dome here with the uh, antenna here so I think that's a communications uh, dome so but yeah uh, it's not too much of a like it's not a bad ship uh, looking ship like I said it's a cross between the NX Enterprise and uh, Nakira class so um, yeah, so anyways, let us go over what I got here. So I have two beam arrays and two dual beam arrays at the uh, front. I have my Borg set with the Obli subspace, subspace rip warp core. For the aft weapons, two uh, anti-proton beam arrays and the uh, ancient omnidirectional beam array and the kinetic cutting beam. For my device... I have the subspace field modulator, weapons battery, and the delta reinforcements. For engineering consoles, I have three RCS accelerators and the uh, assimilated module. For my science console, I have the particle, uh, or sorry, Nakura particle converter, along with the photonic decoy beacon, which I will go over in just a moment. And then for my tactical consoles, I have three anti-proton uh, mag regulators. So for the um, photonic decoy beam or beacon uh, what it does is it deploys a photonic 
uh, decoy beacon a short distance behind its current position. The beacon disrupts any se uh, enemy sensors and gives off the same energy signature as your starship. Enemies within five kilometers will be lured uh, into attacking it. Enemies that attack and damage the beacon will suffer shield damage, have their damage resistance and shield hardness reduced. This effect can stack up to 10 times. At 10 stacks, the target will become disabled for a short time and will unable uh, to be uh, sorry, and will be unable to be disabled by the beacon for a short time. Uh, am I reading that right? A short time and for a short time, and will be unable to be disabled by the beacon for a short time. Okay, so I guess there's a cooldown. So what they're getting at? That's really worded very poorly on Cryptic's end. They should really word that properly. It should say, you know, uh, at 10 stacks, the target will become disabled for a short period of time, period. After this period, uh, it will be unable to be disabled by the beacon for another extended period of time. Uh, the photonic beacon is highly resistant to energy damage, but is very susceptible to kinetic damage. So just so that you are aware, uh, for those PvP players, if you ever see this, use your torpedoes and it will go boom. So, target, uh, so target self, two minute recharge, uh, creates a level 58 photonic de uh, decoy beacon for 60 seconds. So, uh, what it does is uh, taunts all foes within five kilometers. When hit by enemies, applies photonic decoy disruption to attackers uh, to target minus. 298.6 all shields per pulse, minus 5 uh, all damage resistance rating uh, per stack for 10 seconds max, 10 stacks. Increased damage to target shields by 3% per stacks for 10 seconds, max 10 stacks. Uh, attacker receives 1 stack of decoy disruption at 10 stacks of decoy disruption, uh, disables for 5 seconds. Uh, target affected by disable is immune to uh, Decoys beacon disable effect for 10 seconds. Uh, skills that affect this ability, starship drain expertise will improve energy and shield drain resistance to the same. Okay, so yeah, so that's kind of neat. So when they, they attack that and you can attack them and you get a bonus of, you know, um, you know, taking out their shields quicker or whatever. So that was, should be interesting. Uh, what do I got for skills? Uh, here is my uh, spation, uh, spations. Oh my goodness, I can't speak today. Here's my stations. So for my bridge officers, for my uh, ensign, uh, sorry, my ensign uh, tactical, I have over beam overload one. For my uh, lieutenant commander tactical, I have tactical team one, attack pattern beta one, and then fire at will three. For my lieutenant commander. Uh, science, I have science team one, hazard emitters two, gravity well. For my commander in, uh, engineering, I have engineering team one, emergency power shields two, uh, emergency power weapons three, and uh, aceton beam two. And then for my universal, I threw on an engineering and to get that extra um, power to uh, emergency power weapons one. So that's what I got going for me right now. And uh, Without further ado, let's get into an STF and let's see how well this ship handles. Alrighty. So, we'll throw that on. Throw that on. Let's see how well this works. Done already. I like this run. Sounds like this is going to be a good run. Let's see, figure out who I'm shooting at first.
Oh, I'm taking a beating here. Not paying attention as usual. There we go. Holy bejeebus. Someone pretty much just did all this all on their own. I am not surprised, to be honest. I was thinking of laying down the buoy, but, um, or the deco a beacon, but, uh, <clears throat> uh, right at the start there, but they uh, we took everything out in like less than a second, so there was no point putting that down. That would have been a waste. So we had to wait for the two minute recharge time. So we need to get pretty close in order for this to work. So five kilometer radius. So we're gonna drop that buoy right now. Let him, there we go. Oh shoot, I didn't get to the, that beam thing. Darn. Oh, right at the end. That sucks. I didn't get to my uh, thing in time. Shoot. Well, that's kind of silly. Right, there we go. Alright. So, for a 23rd century ship, it's not bad. Um, but as a battle cruiser, uh, the hull points on it are from what I can tell, fairly weak. So, um, so I'm gonna just check my uh, my DPS score here. All right, so my DPS score is 13.68k, which is not bad. So I know I have some improvements to do on this ship. But anyways, so this is uh, this is the uh, 23rd century ship. Like I said, it's not bad. I think the hit points on it are a little low, but I mean, I think that's probably the point of a 23rd century ship. You're not going to have the maximum hit points that you do with, a, say, a T5 or T6 uh, 25th century ship. But, uh, anyways, it's not a bad ship. Uh, I, I really wish I could get the molecular uh, deconstruction beam going there. I forgot to look at that. But, anyways, that's my review for today. Thank you for watching. Live long and prosper. And, as always, we'll see you out there.